So I'd like to welcome to the process of hip hop, originally from Mobile, Alabama, now in the ATL, Georgia, Wordsmith. What's going on, my G? Hey, man, doing good, man. How you doing, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing great, man. I'm so glad you were able to join the show. Oh, man, hey, it's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. Mike Hofield linked, linked us up, man, so I, I was I was eager to meet you, brother, so it's, it's a pleasure, man. It's all mine. Yeah, big shout out. Big shout out to my man, Mike Cofield, too, man, in Atlanta. So, so Wordsmith, man, tell me about, man, let, let, let's get it going. But I want to start with, man, tell me about your background and how you got interested in pursuing hip hop. Oh, man, it's, it's like the greatest story ever told, man. You know, uh, I started as writing poetry, man, when I was like in third grade. And my grandfather told me I need to put it towards music, man. And I've been in love with hip-hop basically all my life, man. And, you know, uh, my mom, she, she joined the army to get me out of Mobile. We went to Germany right away. You know, that was the first time I stepped into a studio, man. Like, I was around 14, 15 when the wall came down over there, you know. You know, I just been been killing balls ever since, you know what I mean? And I uh, grew up around gospel music, you know, soul music, you know what I mean? You know, Al Green, you know, yeah. Billy Holiday, the whole shebang. And the music always been a big part of my life, man. I just love words, man. That's what the words come from, from, man. Yeah, it's a dope name, too. Yeah, going to Germany at an early age, man, you know, and seeing how other people live and then just traveling all over the United States, you know, being a military brat, I got to see the good, bad, and the ugly, you know. Mm-hmm. I just put all that into my music. You know, I always, I always feel like, man, you can't be... This is me, my personal opinion. It's hard for you to be an MC if you're not, if you can't appreciate music, period. You know, you can't just be a, I always think that the best MCs are, are music people. They love all kinds of music and they understand music. And then the other thing that you said that's interesting, man, is your, your background or your, your, you, you have a poetry you know, right. poetry was something that you did. The two go, the the two go hand in hand. Poetry and hip hop, you know, and and the African American oral tradition, man, right. of of poetry is so so right. so deep in our culture, man. So right. it's I always think it's important for people to you got to understand poetry and you know, if, mm-hmm. if possible, do some poetry, man. You know, some of the great some of the great MCs definitely do that. So when you you, you always were around hip hop. What was the point in time, man, where you felt that you were going to pursue this seriously? Because there's a lot of hip hop heads. Right. right. What made you say, I think I want to pursue this as an MC? Oh, man. When I heard what the album, you know, Red Man was telling everybody how to roll a blood, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I, used, I, used, I used to get those tapes over six. You know, they had the singles on them. Yes. I, I would put that in a small little recorder and put that on top of my stereo and I would record myself on the instrumental. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Red Man, Cool G Rap, Too Short. I was Radio Raheem walking through the neighborhood with the yeah. big radio. You know what I'm saying? Back in Ice Cube and Too Short and Too Live Crew, man, you know? Right. So right. When, when I moved to Oklahoma, man, my mom was stationed in Fort Seal. I met some brothers that really challenged me. Those real hard with that pen and pad, man, and we would do shows every week. You know what I mean? And this guy named Fredo from Houston, Texas, man, he heard me rapping one day. And he said he had a dream about me, man. We was at the Grammys, man. And, you know, he said, I'm going to send for you. I was like, yeah, man, I heard it before. And then, like, about a month later, he sent for me from Oklahoma to Houston. I was rapping in Houston all the time. He, he paid me, like, 600 for every verse. I was just 17, wow. you know, and, that was my thing. I was still doing my thing with my with my folks, man, but I was really, you know, just doing shows, be a ghostwriter, you know. So back in 90, 94, man, was really, really, I said, man, this is for me, you know. And, and I've signed a lot of indie deals since then. My, my first deal was a blank contract because the guy was, he was, he was with my organization and he loved me. And he said, we'll do that later. Gave me 25000 He said, we'll, we'll, we'll support that out. But that was my first deal. And I, I haven't stopped. It left a sour taste in my mouth, man. But every every time I get with somebody, like they see the they take the, the kindness for weakness and they see the talent, but they want to just eat off. Yeah, and that's that's the bad part. One of the bad parts about the industry, unfortunately, man. So yeah. would you would you consider yourself, man? Have you done ghostwriting, man, for for other MCs, or are you would you have, consider man. yourself that? I have, man. When I was in Dallas, man, I used to go to ninety seven point nine and. 
and I would rap and do the freestyle thing, man, every week, and they, they retired me, man, and before Lil Flip got his $22 million deal, man, I was in his crib in Houston, in Houston with, with uh, Hip Hop Nonstop TV, you know, and uh, South Park Mexican before he, you know, went to jail, and the guy who seen one day you hear the next day you're gone. So I've I written for a few people, man, and I'm really the epitome of what a ghostwriter is. You know, I'd like to stay behind the scenes, and I pimped that pen for a lot of people, man, but I never really was on Front Street with it and, until I met Cujo Gooder, man, like last year. He was the first cat that was on that level to say, hey, man, I appreciate your talent. It's, it's not going to cost you nothing. You know, I'm, I'm going to share my platform with you. I'm going to put you on, and you're going to eat without, you know, paperwork, just a handshake, just real trill. The first out of all the millionaires I ever met in my life. And I've been rocking on him since then, man. So fast forward 20 years later, I never stopped grinding. I never gave up the love. I dropped like eight records in one year. And, and now I'm going to feed the line volume two. I single. I got producers in Germany working with me. And, I, and this is happening, you know what I'm saying? This is this is like yes. a dream come true, man, to do this, talk to a, a brother, man, and let people know my story, man. I've been through the good, bad, and ugly, like, and everybody who I meet, I make sure they paperwork right. If they don't know about publishing, I help them no for no charge. They copyright everybody, because they ain't gonna go through what I went through. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? So that, I think I was the sacrificial lamb in this instance. To suck it up and show people, man, it's, it's it's real people out here, and you can just keep going and just believe in yourself and don't stop. Apply pressure till they can't breathe, you know. Do you see? Do you see yourself as? I mean, now you know you've been in the game for a while, man. So you see yourself as a mentor to some of these other younger cats. I do, man. I do it, and that's and that's the, just to piggyback on what you asked me. I do consider myself as a a ghostwriter slash producer because I just started making beats. Because of COVID, yeah, and I, I said, yeah. well, I said, well, I can do it too, but I got multiple producers. But I do consider myself as a mentor, man. I, I, I embrace the younger generation, versus like young and old. It's a blood sport, man. And, and, and who else gonna teach them? I mean, you could teach them how to fish. You ain't gotta just give them, to show them how to fish, but don't tax them. You know what I'm saying? Don't be like, take it to the grave with. Give yeah. them the game, yeah. and show, show them how to tie their laces up, and let them run with it, so they can pass it on to the next person. You know, <laughs> so that, that's 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 what I'm about. I Man, I want to create a bunch of mini me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, it, it, you know, when I was listening to your music, man, I heard a lot of different in, influences, man. But you you talked about, you know, again, Red Man, obviously he and when you talk about Wordsmith, he's a Wordsmith, you know, right? Red, definitely. Right. And and who were some of the who were some of the other people that you felt like really influenced your style, man? Man, I mean, being, some of the other MCs. I mean, being from the South, man, of course, you know, uh, Goody Mob, Outkast, he fought it like my number one rapper. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Like, like the wordplay, like even when he was in Grambling, you know, I used to go down to Ruston, Louisiana with Carl Malone, and he told me I was just too clean. Yeah. I don't know what happened with that, but he fought it, man. Um, you know, Rick Rock, you know, uh, the Cosmic Slop Shop. You know, the Loonies. Yes. You know, Ice Cube. Uh, Cool G Rap. <laughs> yeah. Po -rock teachers, man. I mean, it's, it's, the list goes, I'm like, I'm a hip-hop junkie. Rock him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, it's so many, man, from like UGK, like Pimp C and Bon B. That's a big influence. Yes. You know what I mean? I can't forget that. The Third Coast, man. And I really grew up on that. You know, everything they talked about, me and my folks live, not to glorify, but you can relate to it, but definitely UGK, man, ghetto boy, stuff like that, man. There's so many of the name, man. I, I think the greatest story ever told, the book that I'm coming up with, is gonna definitely pinpoint a lot of this, man, in it, you know, about this that big gumbo, man. But E40, that's like my number one rapper, though, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. his yeah. voice go up and down, man. And oh, it's, yeah, he, it's yeah. in me. Yeah, he's, he's, he, you know, he's influential in so many ways one of the ways i think that that i always respected him so much for was he didn't sign a record deal right out the gate man he took right. a long time he he really right. was 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 doing self-distribution 
for a long right. time before he right. actually signed with a Jive, I believe, Jive Records, and he signed right. with them on his own terms too. It was, right. You know, he, he wasn't he wasn't just trying to take the first uh, first record company handout that right. came around. He was definitely a you know an, an industry businessman, I'll say, doing it on his own. And not to mention right. his 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 lyrical skills, man, and his, his delivery, his content. I mean. E40 is just influential, yeah. man. Now, you had said something, man, as far as, you know, being from the South, and I had actually posted this, man, on a, a few weeks back on my podcast, man, as far as, like, you know, I remember Outkast, man. You know, you and I are about the same age, man, and I remember when Outkast came on the scene at the time, Southern hip-hop, man, was like, it just didn't get that much respect, you know? Right. Especially, I'm talking about that early 90s, Mm -hmm. Southern hip hop was was for the most part, man. You had kind of like Scarface, if you really if you really consider Texas the South. But it's like Scarface was kind of like one of your popular MC, and that that was that was it. You really didn't have, you know, Outkast, Goody Mob, obviously, you know, Organized Noise, man. Them, you know, they 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 pushed Southern hip hop to that next level, man. But I always think it's interesting because, you know, Big Boy and Andre 3000, they they, they have a Southern hip hop style. But the right. one thing that's very common to other areas is they have lyrical content that right. is, that is right. of a high, high caliber. So it, it's like it don't matter where you're from if you right. have that. It's almost like hip hop requires you to have the, the bar is very high on lyrical content delivery so it don't matter where you're from if you have those things right you right. know you, you you typically are going to be you know successful especially when you look at you know your a, a cool g rap a nas uh, you know right. a big i mean they all have that in common you know right. so I, I think it's i think it's interesting that you were that you were saying that now do you as far as now you're talking about you're working on a book Elaborate a little bit on that, man. What's the book going to be about? Well, it's basically going to be um, about my story from beginning to end, man, about the music, you know, the, the quote-unquote street life. Um, my daughter, my middle daughter, she's 21. She's a, she's a writer. She's a creative, and she wants to write it. So we've been working on it, man. So, you know, people always ask me, like, why are you not out yet, man? You, you fly. I've been, I've been hearing that all my life, but I, I'm going to believe as well, not to be philosophical, man, but they do say the best for last and and everybody got their time, you know what I mean? So and I, I put it on me because I made the deals with the wrong people. And I don't blame them because I, I allowed them in my life and I put that on me. You know what I'm saying? First time, same on you, yeah, but I allowed that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was just I just wanted to I just wanted to rap. I didn't think about the business part, you understand? So to tell people like, hey man, never give up. You have pitfalls in life, everybody has choice. But the greatest story ever told, you know, a lot of people remember that to the Bible, the Quran or whatnot. But I feel like, man, I think therefore I am that deal. So I want to let people know, man, this is the greatest story ever told, man, resilience. And here I am, right, still, still on front street with my chest out. People are like, wow, he dope. I'm like, everybody in my circle, we know that. But I, I'm not, I'm a humble king, but I want to show people, never give up, keep pushing through. There's nothing new under the sun, but we got a story that's similar. To a lot, but it's very unique. You know what I'm saying? Yes. yes. So, yes. And, and I just want to let people know, man, this is the greatest story ever told, and, and I am the truth. What they say, the, the best known secret. I'm the best kept secret. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So. So so you you know you, as far as next steps, man. Your what are you what are you, gonna be working on, man? I know we in this COVID situation, and so. You know, you got a lot of people just at, at home, man, grinding and, and trying to produce, you know, music and such. But what is your next project, man? What do you what do you what would you like to work on next? Oh, man. Uh, after this Feed the Lines, man, I, I want to put out an album um, called, uh, what's it called? Uh, not something like that. It's uh, Whatever's Clever. You know, and uh, I'm recording like five songs a day, brother. I got the oh, mic wow. thing right oh, here. Yeah. I, yes, told my, I told my I told my bro in Dallas, I said, hey, man, I want to record at least one a day. He said, why don't you record at least five? So I'm recording five songs a day. I got about 300 since COVID hit. 
And um, the clip loaded, man. So I'm putting out a single or two every month. You know, I've been doing it for the last three months. So hundred dollars hit like sixteen thousand organically, man, off the muscle. You know, we don't we have a small limited budget, but but um, just album after album, man. And hopefully, um, me and me and Gun Club Good and man gonna get this EP out, a seven song EP, man. You know, it's on the tuck, but. You know, he mentioned it to me. We ain't even capping the riding coattails, but that's going to be real big because that's somebody I looked up to as well, you know, growing up. So just just a little bit more features, man, for me. Instead of playing the back, I'm going to be on Front Street a little bit more. You know, just a lot of features come. I got features up with Soko for show on the West Coast, uh, uh, Long Block Fest, you know, in Philly, uh, Limbo Child. We just did one called Can I? And I have maybe like two or three with her. She, she, she reminds me of like Jill Scott. She's a real yeah. dope talent, man. And she's like, like, you know, somebody needs to really pay attention to what she's doing, man. She's on social. She uh she's a pretty dope talent. She seen, produced. She actually arranged the last song can I we did for uh, Big Floyd. You know, my homeboy used to play basketball with Big Floyd in Houston. Yeah. So it's a real small circle. I know him as Big Floyd because of the, the the SUC, you know, the screwed up click soldier united fans. But to make a long story short, man, I'm just I'm just putting out records, but that uh uh, whatever's clever is going to be a cold album. I'm thinking about doing a, a trilogy where I have three albums, but it's going to be the docu-series to the um, greatest story never ever told. Oh, you understand? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have three albums, the DVD. I'm going to have everything. You can buy them individually because they're going to be past, present, and future. You can buy the past CD. You can buy the present, or you can buy the future CD. Future. So I'm going to have a trilogy. It's called Past, Present, and Future, the greatest story ever told, man. So, so what's what's the best way, man, for people to stay in contact with you, man? Because you got so much going on, man. So what's the best way for people to stay on top of what you're doing and when you're going to be releasing your next joint? I mean, the, the best the best way to do it, man, is look at Instagram. And that's wordsmith underscore ink, I-N-C. So that's wordsmith underscore ink. And all my uh, music platform is the wordsmith. It's T-H-E underscore wordsmith and that's big t lowercase w because i trademarked it because there's a million and one wordsmiths out there yeah but it's only one d wordsmith with t-h-e underscore lowercase wordsmith understand but instagram and all social media uh platform for his music streaming services the wordsmith youtube we got videos pumping i edit all the videos my boy mb will shoot them so we we one-stop shop and we, we really busting the heads like so just get at me we out here well, man, hey, I appreciate you joining the Process of Hip Hop podcast, man. Best of luck to you in the future, man, when you release your next project, man. Have you come back on the show if that's okay with you. Hey, man, that's love, man, and I appreciate you, man. Much respect, family, and all blessings to you and your fam out there, man. All right, man.